What does Power BI have to do with modern warfare? You're going to find out in this exciting talk with Ken Tyler, who talks to us not just about Power BI, but the philosophy behind Power BI. Ken forced me to look at Power BI and BI in general from a, a very different vantage point. This talk is sure to widen your horizon and help you see the big picture. Ken is an independent Power BI consultant with his company 8th Fold and also runs other websites including bislogans.com. At the end of this interview, Ken talks about how learning these BI slogans can speed up your Power BI journey. So make sure you watch till the end. You can connect with Ken using the links in the description below. And it's stories like Ken that get me excited. Stories from real people just like you and me using Power BI to make a real impact. These are the Power BI pros. If this video inspires you in any way, please leave a comment and let Ken know. And make sure to subscribe and click that bell so you are notified whenever I go live to help you in your Power BI journey. Let's hear it from Ken. Hey Ken, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Doing terrific. Good to be talking to you today. Uh, so let's uh, dive right in. And why don't you tell me about some of the work that you're doing uh, at present with Power BI, with helping others with Power BI? Right now, I'm in the learning stage. My real interest in BI is in data modeling. And um, the approach taken by Power BI is totally different than the SQL databases and access databases and things that I've worked with in the past. Mm -hmm. So I'm spending a lot of time yeah. uh, working on your material and working on stuff from the Italians and trying to get where it starts to make a little bit of sense. That's great. So I know you have started to work with a client and I know it wasn't easy going to begin with. It was not clear whether even there is any Power BI work involved. How is, uh, how is that come along? It's interesting because it's totally greenfield. Mm -hmm. It's a trucking company and they're putting in sensors that um, are basically time clocks that check to see if the truckers are drunk when they show up as well. And they... <laughs> Very important. <laughs> Well, the other check they do is to make sure that they've had enough rest time since their last shift. Mm -hmm. All right. uh, so um, they've hired some company that's putting in these uh, instruments for them. Uh, and the, that comes with programmers who are programming them for them. Mm -hmm. So my client is talking with them about what kind of information they're going to provide to him. Hmm. And they're saying, well, we can provide anything you want. Oh, yes. Yes. They're doing a dilemma. <laughs> okay, cool. So, so that means he gets to ask hmm. within reason yeah. for whatever he wants. So as a consulting him, the question then becomes, if you could get whatever you wanted, what would be the best information to have yeah. in a list, uh -huh. in a SharePoint list, to then try to do business analysis on? Wow. So you're pretty much setting up the framework for kind of the data flow. And if it is not done right, then... So, of course, I imagine the way you might be approaching it is... So, of course, there's going to be a set of questions that they can think of right now. But of course, as BI goes, there's always that next set of questions where people see the first thing and they go, oh, this is awesome. But what about this? What about that? Right. So there's a next level of questions and th things that go beyond that. So it seems like your first task there is to kind of or, or, or give some advice, at least on guidance on, hey, this is what the data flow should have. So that not only can we answer the questions being asked right now, but hopefully the ones in the future. So is that is that is, is, is that the way kind of you see it? Well, I'm guessing on my past experience, my client is not overly articulate. Mm -hmm. um, the possibly there's uh, language issues. His English is about as good as my Spanish. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, so 
um, it's actually going to be pretty simple, mm -hmm. but I told him to ask for an identifier machine that's in the scanning, a date time field, All right. a, a, you know, a day, hour and minute field. Yeah. And, and there is a kind of a status field because sometimes, um, if they get turned away, he wants to record that the guy showed up and hmm. was drunk or okay. something like that. Got it. And, you know, I'm just guessing what, oh, and then I, I told him if the machine can supply it, mm -hmm. when the guy checks out, have it, have a field where they can put the total number of minutes he worked yeah. in that shift. Got it. Because why have calculated in Power BI yeah. or during the loading process if they can supply it, right? Yeah. All right. So that's, it's just that's, that's pretty good. So so what I want to ask you is that as you are as you're discussing with this client and oh and I love this process, right? I mean you've heard me use the phrase of kind of peel the onion and I kinda of enjoy the process, right? So so that's that's good. You're walking the path, but do you already have at least some vision, some idea of what the initial set of reports would look like that you would create, or or not yet? You're not thinking about that right yet, right now. You're gonna you know kind of do this and then think about that. Not only do I not have an idea, I don't think he has an idea. All right, pretty cool. So let me ask you something else. So I'm sure as this BI revolution is happening, and I have this theory that in in the near future, in the near future, there are going to be two kind of companies, right? So companies who become what I call data savvy, who, who embrace data, leverage data, use it in their decision making. And then there are going to be companies who don't or don't do it effectively. And my theory is that those companies, the latter, which we don't use it or don't use it effectively, are going to go extinct because they're going to be outcompeted at every every turn. So, so, you know, so if this transition is happening, and I believe it is, then there are going to be a lot of companies out there, and I like the word you use, greenfield, right? So I think what you meant with that was that this is somebody who, who not really uh, used data in a disciplined fashion, right? They have not probably collected it. They have not thought about it, right? But something has changed, either kind of internally in the organization or externally or something like that, which is now making them go, whoa, we, we can't run this way, we, we need to take these steps. What's been your overall observation with working like this? So, I'm, so if somebody is finding, a consultant is finding like a, working with somebody, a uh, company in, the, in this kind of greenfield state, what would be your kind of takeaway or advice for them? Well, I agree with you on the, the change that's coming. All right. Um, I'm, I'm a student of military history as well, and it reminds me of the German army at the beginning of the Second World War who mastered something called combined arms warfare. All right. And until the people opposing them could learn to do it, yeah. no one could stop them. Yeah, is that, is right. that what's also referred to as, uh, as, as Blitzkrieg? Is that, is that the same term? That's a way of thinking about it. Okay. What it what it meant was, and it relates to the computer question, hmm. is they had a policy of doing heavy training for all levels of command. Okay. And so they expected at every level down people to be smart and hmm. adapt to the moment, wow. to the situation, take advantage of it, right? Beautiful. And actually, in the German army, you were supposed to disobey orders if the situation called for it. As opposed right? to possibly the classic way where orders were strictly relayed and, and, and you know, somebody at the bottom was just following instructions, right? So that was that the classic way and this new way to kind of challenge that or change that? Right. And nobody, when they invaded France, the, the French army came up with a perfect plan, French are perfect plan for combating. Um, it's just that it was going to take them 14 days to get ready to execute it. Okay. Yeah. And by that time, they pop the country. And so there will be lots of companies who just wow. won't be able to do it. Whew. And the biggest reason, yeah, the biggest reason I've seen 
about why they won't be able to do it doesn't have to do with technology. Mm-hmm. It has to do with power. power. The, the implication mm-hmm. of being data-driven yeah. is that you make your decisions based on some analysis of data, and you judge whether they succeed or not based on some data you record, okay. which means decisions no longer just made by the highest paid guy in the room. Everything I read about data-driven companies means that all the employees have to have access to all the data and ideas about how to use the data and employ the data and extend the data Mm -hmm. have to be able to come from everybody. And almost everybody I've ever worked with is not going to. Got it. So I'm I'm trying to absorb it all. Man, this is like a... You know, yeah, this is this is pretty cool. So data is just kind of a means to an end. I mean, of course, I often use the word and I say I'm passionate about data and we talk about data driven organization, all that. But but data is just just kind of a, a, a sign for something else, something bigger. And what you're saying is that data, maybe this new age it signifies power. So that's what it's about. That's the change that needs to occur. The power in a way needs to be distributed similar to the 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 change in the modern war- warfare that you talked about so that people up and down the chain the hierarchy of the organization are empowered and and make smarter decisions is that is that, is that am i kind of getting it right yes well you can imagine a meeting and uh, somebody says we should do x y and z mm-hmm. and and the question is well there are two questions. What data did you have to support that idea? And how are we going to test what happens yeah. so that when we do it, we will know whether it succeeded or not? Yeah. Right? Beautiful. And then if it doesn't succeed, mm-hmm. we will stop doing it and we'll do something else. Yeah. Wow. That, that's, you know? that's, that's really powerful. And it doesn't matter if somebody has those two answers and they're able to experiment. It doesn't really matter where they are in the hierarchy chain right i mean they should be empowered to take that action i mean as long as they yep here's the data to support it here's how i'm going to measure if it works or not and report back to you then they should be empowered to do it right right the problem with if all the i if all the direction comes from the top yeah no no that means there's a really long communication loop yeah. before people find out what's yeah. going on levels and it also means one of the big things about a data-driven environment is you don't know in advance what kind of insights you might be able to use yeah right you, you don't know right. what the questions to ask right so that kind of right so obviously that, that makes sense um, so that's the reason yeah. why everybody has to have a voice yes. because you can't guarantee, no matter how smart you were, that sitting at the top, you will think of all the things that you need to be looking at. You need to hear from everybody. Wow, that's that's beautiful. So, folks, what you just heard, uh, that's the most beautiful way that I've heard uh, this whole new revolution being described. And, and, and frankly, I gained a whole new level of understanding. So, of course, I look at it from a very, uh, uh, you know, kind of singular point of view. I do love Power BI, and I often things look at things from that perspective. But this, in a way, Ken is almost looking at it from a higher vantage point. So, Ken, that, that was uh, pretty incredible. So, let's, uh, let's switch gears a bit. And let's talk about uh, your own journey. So now uh, you're in a position where where you are, you know, kind of helping clients with Power BI, and of course you've you've had a history of helping them with technology, different technology tools. Power BI is kind of new on the scene, and of course I've also seen how active you are within our community, and you're always there to lend a helping hand, uh, help out somebody who's stuck. But uh, if you if you will. Uh, You've had you've had a, a you know like a, a few few different uh, a few different careers. So tell me tell me a bit about that. Well, the joke is, when I got out of college, I went to work for my father, who ran a machine shop and a blacksmithing shop. All right, which was a great deal. Eventually. Uh, my wife was a teacher, and she had an Apple, and I learned computer programming. And I, a, an old-time Excel developer broke me in, and uh, 
whatever. So when I quit working at the blacksmithing shop, mm -hmm. I started being a developer and I was worried that I didn't have experience. And I knew this guy, this French programmer, and he said, look, yeah. you have tons of experience. What have you been doing for 20 years? Uh -huh. You have these clients. They know how to do the same thing that you do. They have problems. You help them solve the problems. Yeah. And sometimes there are things that need doing that they could do, but they have you do instead because you do it all the time and you're – so he said, that's the same thing you're going to be doing with databases and programming. Yeah. And it turns out he was right. Yeah. That's the pattern of my interaction with my clients. Wow. They all know how to sell and access and, mm -hmm. and you know, do stuff and whatever. It's because seeing multiple clients gives me a broader perspective that I'm yeah. valuable to them. Yeah, wow. So I'm I'm stepping back and look look at the work that I, I kind of do, at least as a consultant. And yeah, I'm thinking at, at, at some level, it's basically problem solving. So the tools of the trade would change. Hey, just humor me. Tell me some of the tools you would use in your career as a blacksmith. It's just, just, just their names. <laughs> well, you know, we had a full machine shop. All right. We had lathes and tools. Yeah. We did welding. We had torches. Um, you know, we had big drills. Yeah. We also had trip hammers yeah. and forges. Wow. And oh, but, oh my gosh! But, yeah, this is really cool. <laughs> so the questions would be about the actual. It was row crop farming, tomatoes and beans, and think of the actual technology, mm -hmm. which advanced over time. But sometimes the the farmer would have an idea. Yeah. Sometimes the farmer wanted something. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a guy who wanted a plow that would plow five feet deep. Hmm. And he couldn't find one anywhere. So he hired my dad who made, who took a plow that would plow three foot feet deep. Yeah. And, and made a new one, modified and improved, that would actually plow five feet deep. So those were the kinds of problems we solved. But yeah. it wasn't because our clients were ignorant. They knew a lot about the problems and about possible solutions. Sure. Yeah. And oftentimes we collaborate. Yeah. Yeah. That that that's that's really good. And and, and frankly, when you were kind of naming the tools, I was thinking about kind of the Power BI world. And maybe there's some symmetry there because when I think about it, that there are some kind of big, kind of heavy hitting tools which which we have, uh, which which work in in most cases. But sometimes you got to bring out kind of that that small I don't know uh, mixing uh, vocations here, but scalpel or something like that. So something something kind of fine tuning work. So of course Power BI in a way your tools change, but you're doing the same thing. So uh, Ken, believe it or not, this morning I was talking to Anthony uh, on a similar call. And he talked about his life as a lawyer earlier. And he talked about how he was able to transition some of those skills to Power BI, data analysis. And, of course, you have a similar story. And so what would you say uh, – so this is one of the most common most common refrains that I get when, when I talk to people where they would say, oh, Avi, Power BI is, is great, right, and it looks great, and you're doing great work, but – I am not a techie, or sometimes they would use a different label, but basically some label that would disqualify them, at least in their mind. They would say, oh, I can't do this because I'm not a techie, because I don't know SQL, or somebody would come in and say, I don't know SQL, I don't know Excel, right? And and I, and I of course, for me, that's like weird because I've seen so many examples of people, kind of just yours and Anthony's. What would you say to that person who's, who's sitting there saying, oh, I can't do this because X, Y, Z? Well, I'm working with a client right now that's trying to make a very difficult transition, mm -hmm. which is they're a, a clinic. They have maybe 20 or 30 therapists. Mm -hmm. They're trying to get to where, as a group, they have a vocabulary and a practice of talking about their data resources and being able to plan and change them and adapt them for new contracts and new jobs and things. 
which is a massive change for them. And it, it, it's, they have to call on their employees, on the group members to get invested and involved, even if some of them don't think, you know, don't deal with data very well. Mm -hmm. It's interface between the data and the business takes a lot of energy and attention. All right. And the, it takes that attention whether people are techies or not. In mm -hmm. fact, the person who's not a techie sometimes has the most to contribute because they can tell you how the application you're working on needs to work for the people who aren't techies. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know? they, they may know more about the business. Right. The hardest part of doing any kind of data oriented stuff or BI is not the technology. It's being willing to think about it, care about it, and talk about it. That's the hardest part. Whoa. Not the technology. Wow. Right? Actually, it wasn't clear where you were headed, but man, you brought us to a beautiful spot. Beautiful spot. So almost what you said sounds to me like it sounds almost like a like a mediator almost right where where you kind of bringing these things together and and people and tech and that is like a critical job maybe that is the real job and, and technology is just kind of a tool is is that am i am i kind of capturing uh, your sentiment uh, here closely or or not <laughs> i was just reading a posting about some company mm -hmm. that had gone through the same changes in their procurement process six times in the last 30 years okay but what happened is every time they did them yeah no everybody stopped paying attention and gradually the same problem would creep back in mm -hmm. right yeah so it's it's the commitment to to keep working on it all the time. Yeah. That's really hard. It's not thinking about data as like a commodity you can buy, you can purchase, you can deal with it. We bought this database and why doesn't it work? Yeah. It's the commitment. The ongoing commitment, open-ended commitment. Yeah. That's pure. That that's really beautiful. And and that's an analogy uh, interestingly I use it all the time kind of in in our business and our team. I always talk about it as a garden and I say, Hey, this is our garden, but it's totally up to us how we keep it. Right. If you, if you let it be overgrown weeds, guess what? It's, it's going to be overgrown with weeds, right? But if you pull out the weeds, if you plant flowers, take care of that, tend it, it's going to be a beautiful garden. You're going to enjoy it. So that's, that's, that's pretty awesome. So uh, and, and yeah. Your metaphor. Oh. What's important about having a garden mm -hmm. is are you put in the work? Indeed. How much do you know about gardening? Yeah. How? I mean, you may need to get advice from somebody or whatever, but saying, oh, I can't do a garden because, man, you know, I just don't know about plants and stuff. That's not yeah. the important thing. Yeah, man, that this is beautiful. So, folks, if, if you notice, we're like, we're still talking about Power BI, believe it or not. But, yeah, we, we're, we're from a different vantage point, almost from a higher vantage point. Now, I'll admit... I, I don't I mean I, I feel I feel like I'm I'm in thin air right now because uh, this is pretty cool this is kind of new for me so uh, so Ken let's uh, let's end on a note which I, I've seen you express something profound there so of course your company is eighth fold uh, and and by the way before I ask the, the last question uh, there's a story behind eighth fold do, do you mind sharing that quickly the name it's the a top of joke okay there's a there's Theorem in topology that no matter how big a sheet of something you have or how thin it is, right. you cannot fold it in half. Oh boy, okay. Repeat it yeah. more than seven times. Great. So right. if, if that is true. So when I, when yeah, I tell that ahead. to people, mm -hmm. there are two responses. Uh -huh. Some people say, cool. Uh -huh. And some people what if you use a vice? Uh. What if you use a really thin tin foil? Some people instinctively yeah. cannot accept there's a limitation. Okay. Right? <laughs> cool. So where where do you land on, on this one? I mean, 
is there is there a message that you you agree with or you're trying to impart with the name? Should we challenge? It's a joke. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Terrific. Love that. So, um, so I know there's another uh, idea that um, you know you believe in, and you you, you call it BI slogans, and and it's something that we we kind of phrase, we use, we believe in, and it can be it can be empowering, and and I'm 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 kind of using your words. It can be empowering even if you don't fully understand it. So so tell me a bit about that. And also tell me about this journey of yours where I have seen you write about what you're learning. I've seen you step in and help other folks in this community. So this, this, this I want to I want to understand a little bit about your, your thinking behind this BI slogans, this idea, but also this journey of yours where you're learning, but I see you teaching at the same time. And uh, to me, this seems like a powerful combination. So tell me more about that. BI slogans is copied from a Buddhist teaching device, but you know, only about 30% of the people really are comfortable thinking in abstractions. I so if you have get a bunch it. of people I, 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 BI. Yeah, okay, cool. Okay. A lot of them are not going to be able or really be interested in the theoretical underpinnings i i know and and right now i'm just thinking about row context filter context i mean it's it's yeah it's one of those things so i totally okay. get that so nevertheless you don't want them just thrashing around so the idea with slogans is they're simp they should be simple and easy to remember and meaningful for someone yeah. who really doesn't understand the theory, right? Mm. So we take a really simple one, which is by preference, try to load all your data models as star schemas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Try to start with star schema mm -hmm. because many, many, many problems and complex DAX code and uh, will go away. Absolutely. It, okay. So that's an example. You can tell that to somebody hmm. and, and they can learn what a star schema is and, and they can say, oh, hmm. Avi says I should start with a star schema. Yeah. I don't know why necessarily, mm -hmm. but it will do them a lot of good. Yes. So I'm trying to collect ideas <laughs> from you and from the Italians mm -hmm. uh, who, I mean, the Italians are a good example. They're wonderful. Indeed. <laughs> they're incredible, yeah. but they're really interested in going deep in the theory, right? Yeah. I can imagine a lot of people would just look at their stuff and bounce, right? That's So what me. I want... <laughs> What I want is like 50 slogans yeah. that you can understand with a minimal understanding of Power BI that will yeah. do you a lot of good if you practice them, right? Don't use don't use two-way relationships. Wow, I, you know? I, I love it. I do it. I love it, man. And that's brilliant. So that, that's one of my goals. I have a website where I'm making them avail available, cool. including because of encouragement from Diego in our class as well, a mirror site in Spanish. Perfect. So, so we'll see what happens. So I know the English one is bislogans.com. And by the way, folks, we'll link uh, Ken's uh, connection information and his websites in the description below. Uh, which, which, uh, which, what is the Spanish site? It's called B.I. Dichos. Yeah, a yeah. dicho is a, kind of a simple saying. Beautiful. Uh, Beautiful. That's, that's right. amazing. So, uh, wow. So, I'm, I'm, so I have often talked about this from my perspective where I said that. Uh, so one of my students shared this phrase with me and I've held on to it ever since. He said, to teach is to learn twice. And I've seen you do that and you're through the side, through BI slogans, through helping students in community. Have you felt the impact of that? Have you felt like that by teaching, by writing, by all of this stuff, that it's accelerated your learning uh, a few times? Well, I to really learn, you have to have engagement. Mm -hmm. 
and I just trying to read or look at things the way I've learned things in the past mm -hmm. is find a forum where people are asking questions and then you yeah. you learn enough you try to learn enough to where you can start and then you go on and you start trying to answer their questions and yeah. sometimes you, beginning, you have to stop and go make a a Power BI file and try this and try that before you answer yeah. and whatever. Yeah, I found that not only does it drive me to learn more, mm -hmm. but, but it tells me what kind of things people are asking, what I'm having problems with. Yeah, beautiful. That's wonderful. Well, that's my path for learning. That's great. Hey, thanks for sharing all of that. And of course, I, yeah. I know your journey is going to continue as you walk in this path and as you work with your clients and help them with Power BI as well. So Ken, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, yeah, it was, it was great to have you on. Well, thanks. I enjoy talking with you. And one of my first slogans is gonna be come from you, which is that people intelligence has to come before machine intelligence. All right, woohoo. Thanks for that. All right, take care, Ken. Slogans help you learn from the wisdom of others. That's what makes Scanner Pro. If you would like to become a Power BI Pro, then join us in the Learn Power BI family. There's information in the details below. Power on, my friend.